Now, as we move into this new series, Base Camp, um, how many of you are familiar with what a base camp is? Anyone? Okay, how many of you have ever climbed a mountain that you needed a base camp for? Anyone? I figured that might be the answer. Okay, we got a few. That's awesome. I have never climbed a mountain that needed a base camp. But basically, uh, what a base camp is, is like if, if you ever watch something about people climbing Mount Everest or one of those huge mega mountains, what they do is they climb up a certain distance and then they set up a base camp that's kind of their base of operations. That's where they make sure they've got their supplies in order. That's where they rest. That's, that's where they get their plan together. And so base camp is, is just this place where, where they're making sure that they're ready for the journey. So what we're talking about in this series is that we, we are all on this journey this climb to holiness. Our, our vision statement is upward, outward, forward. And, and we believe that every person should be growing to be more like Jesus. And so if you think about this series as this, this great journey that we're on to a, a mountaintop to holiness, the base camp is where we come together and we make sure we've got our plan in order, we make sure we know what we need to know, we make sure we've got our supplies ready, and, and this is huge for us. Because if we are going to be holy, which we are called to do as Christians, we don't just come to sing together and, and socially distance, shake hands or wave at each other, we come to become holy, to be transformed by God. And so base camp, this series, is designed to help us revisit what we believe. If we are going to be prepared for the journey to holiness, we have to know what we believe. You don't just luck your way into holiness. It doesn't just happen. You have to have a strong grip on what you believe, and through what you believe and through living that out, God changes us and transforms us into his image. And so we are on this journey, and you see the mountains behind me, and I've never climbed a mountain that needed a base camp, but this journey to holiness, it's no small task. It's, it's not a small thing. This isn't just about becoming a slightly better version of yourself. This is about becoming holy as our God is holy. And so we just want to make sure that we're spending time knowing what we believe, revisiting what we believe, because what you believe will influence your actions. Doctrine and practice are two sides of the same coin. What I mean by that is what you believe and what you do go together. So my kids like to say, like, you know, the basement is always a scary place in a house, right? And my kids can be scared of the basement, especially when there's a bunch of fireworks going off or something like that. And so occasionally, um, my kids will say, like, we're not going to go down there right now. We're going to hang up up here with everyone else. And, and we say, are you scared? And they're like, no, no, I'm not scared. I just don't want to go down there right now. The, the truth is their belief or their fear is influencing their action. If you, so hardly any of you set off fireworks last night, right? Um, I, we did at the Dockery household. I don't know, if it, are we going to get arrested for that? Is that even legal? Did I just commit a crime and brag about it? Um, <laughs> And so we, well, last night we did, we set off some fireworks. We don't do that very often. I definitely don't do that. Um, I, I like them, they're fun. But, but if you believe fireworks are dangerous, you're probably not the one up there setting them off. In fact, the last time we set fireworks off at the Dockery's house was probably about eight years ago. And we had one of those ones that you light it and it shoots like 10 shots. And they set it up and lit it. And after that first shot, you know what happened? It fell over, and it just started spinning around, shooting fireworks in every direction. And one flew in, we're running, we're taking cover, and one flew into the garage and exploded, and we hadn't done it since. And so last night, we came together, and we started setting off fireworks, and I'm just going to be honest with you, there was this, like, belief in my heart and in my mind that, like, something might happen. <laughs> And so I'm sitting in there, there in my chair trying to act cool, but every time a firework would shoot up, I was kind of like, ooh. In fact, this is my tent over here. If you look, down at the bottom, there is a big hole in it. You know what that hole's from? That was from fireworks. <laughs> so I had a reason to be afraid. But what we believe 
influences the way we behave. And so we can't be holy if we have the wrong beliefs. So through this series, we are going to focus on what we're going to use is the Nazarene, the Church of the Nazarene, the Articles of Faith. There's 16 Articles of Faith. And it's important that we know what we believe so that we can be who God called us to be. It starts today, we're going to look at the first three Articles of Faith. It starts with knowing the Creator God. If we are going to be holy as God is holy, then we'd better know who God is and what God's all about. We can't know our purpose without knowing the Creator God. And so, so God is holy, and, and we want to be holy. We are called to be holy, and so we're going to look at who God is today. I'm going to start by reading the first three articles of faith. We've got lots of scriptures, lots of things today, but I'm going to read you the first three articles of faith. The first one says this, we believe in one eternally existent, infinite God, sovereign creator and sustainer of the universe, that he only is God, holy in nature, attributes and purpose, the God who is holy love and light is triune and essential being, revealed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're going to expand on these in a second, but the first article of faith is right there. So we, we see that God is the one true God. There is no other God that creates and sustains the universe. There is no other God that can give you light and life and love. There is one true God, and that's who we're here to worship today. Then we see in that first article of faith that that God is triune. We're going to get into this in a minute. But our God is one, but he exists in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Let's go to the second article of faith. It says, we believe in Jesus Christ, the second person of the triune Godhead, that he was eternally one with the Father, that he became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary, so that two whole perfect natures, that is to say the Godhead and manhood, are thus united in one person, very God and very man, the God-man. We believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins, and that he truly rose from the dead and took again his body, together with all things pertaining to the perfection of man's nature, wherewith he ascended into heaven and is there engaged in intercession for us. So the second part of the Trinity, God is three persons, all God, but three distinct persons. We've got the Father, we've got the Son, Jesus, who is the incarnation of God that came to earth, lived as one of us, and gave everything, sacrificed himself on a cross, was raised from the dead, and ascended into heaven to intercede for us. So that's the second person of the Trinity. Let's go to the third. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune Godhead, that he is ever-present, and efficiently active in and with the church of Christ, convincing the world of sin, regenerating those who repent and believe, sanctifying believers, and guiding into all truth as it is in Jesus. So there's our first three articles of faith. There is one God who's triune in nature. The other two members are Jesus Christ, who came, was incarnated by the Holy Spirit, walked this earth as fully God and fully man, died, rose again, ascended, and, and is interceding for us, and the Holy Spirit who is constantly at work in us. And so, so this is who God is. Now I know, let me say this, I know for a lot of you that, that this is probably more review than anything new. I know that most of us have probably heard plenty of messages on who God is, but, but this is important. I was thinking about this, so there's a movie on Netflix and it's called Free Solo. Have any of you seen Free Solo? It's about this guy who climbs mountains with no gear, no ropes, nothing. He just climbs with his bare hands and his shoes, like, I mean, I'm sure he wears clothes, but, but he climbs mountains with no gear. And so this whole, um, this whole show is about him climbing El Capitan in Yosemite. Have you guys ever seen that mountain? It is straight up. I mean, there is, it's not one of these deals. It's one of these deals. And, and so he, this whole movie is about his 
preparation and his just, just his infatuation with wanting to climb this mountain, El Capitan, with, with nothing, with no gear. And in the movie, like, he talks about the fact that he knows every single step he's going to take on that mountain. He knows every handhold. He's done this climb so many times with ropes to practice so that he knows exactly where his feet are going to go, exactly where his hands are going to go. See, the truth is, when we're on a journey, a big journey, climbing a mountain, it's not enough to just say, I know that, and move on. If we're going to be successful, if you're going to climb Mount Everest, if you're going to climb El Capitan, you have to have a plan and you have to know exactly what you're going to do and guess what you need to do in order for that to happen? You need to go over it over and over again. You need to practice. You need to study. And so this may be review, but this is so important for us to continue to center ourselves, to continue to come to base camp and to know exactly where we're going and how we're gonna get there. And so, our God, let's talk about our God. There is one God. The world around you would tell you that there are, are many gods, but the first thing that I want you to see from these three articles of faith is that there is one true God. There are a lot of imposter gods. So we talk about capital G gods, that's, that's the one true God, and then we talk about lowercase g gods. Those are, the, those are the imposters, the things in life that wanna be your gods, but they can't be. There is one true God, the creator and sustainer of everything. That true God is holy, and in that true God is life and light and love. And none of the imposter gods, none of them, can make you whole. None of them can make you holy. None of them can give you life as you were created to have it. There is one God. Without that God, we can't be holy. Let's look at John chapter 14, starting in verse 6. Jesus is speaking. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So what Jesus is saying here, uh, we talked about the triune God, Father, Son, Spirit. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. But Jesus is saying there is one way to holiness, to life, to light, to love. There is one way to become who you were created to be. And that is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through the Holy God. And so, so that's the first thing is there is one God. Can you imagine this? So do any of you have a desire to climb a mountain like Mount Everest? Would any of you even consider that possibility? I'm asking a lot of questions and nobody's answering any of them. It's cool. I'll talk to myself. It's good. Um, I, I love like adventure. I, there is a part of me that would love to plan a trip and try to go to Mount Everest. Like if you are a mountain climber, that's the mountain, right? That is the mountain to climb. In fact, I was just looking some stuff up this morning and there, there are, um, I can't remember what, my mind goes blank every time I try to go off script here, but there's, there are seven mountains, the biggest ones in each continent. And, and those mountains of them, Mount Everest is the most famous, it is the, it is the most daunting to climb. And so out of all of those, it's the, it's the hardest. There's a 29% chance if you try to climb Mount Everest, you'll make it. And we're not talking about just people like you and I just going and trying. We're talking about people who prepare and plan and do all. So like Mount Everest is the mountain. And so can you imagine if we all planned and we trained and we said, we're going to climb Mount Everest, we're going on the adventure, and we all got in the car and and we started driving and we thought we were going to go to the airport and we were going to fly and we were going to end up, we were going to go on Mount Everest. Can you imagine if we got out out of the van or the vehicle in Kentucky and looked up at a hill and someone said, all right, go ahead, climb it. Can you imagine that? Like, it's not... It's not Mount Everest, like there is one mountain that if you are a great mountain climber, you need to climb that mountain, that's Mount Everest. There is one true God. There are a lot of imposters, but they're nothing. They can't give you anything. There is one true God. 
John 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is triune nature of God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made, and in Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Listen, the first part of our journey here, the first part of our base camp, of our ascent to holiness, of our becoming like the holy God, is that we have to understand that there is no other way than through Jesus Christ, the Son, and knowing the holy God through the work of the Spirit, through the love of the holy God, there's no other way. So number one, there is one God, one true God. Number two, That God is triune in nature. What that means is we serve one God that exists in three persons. This is probably one of the more difficult concepts in the Christian faith, this idea of a triune God, a God that's one, but a God that is three persons. So last year, I don't have a lot of experience climbing mountains, but last year, Megan and I um, went to Canada and we climbed a a mountain. um, It was called the Chief. And the chief, like I looked at the first day we got there, I looked at it and I said, Megan, we got to climb that thing. (laughs) And that was just me being me. Like I didn't think we'd really do it. But the last day we were there, we were like, let's go do it. So we started climbing and the chief, like there is a summit there. And so we started up the path and it was this huge journey. And we got about three quarters of the way up. And right there it split off and it said, if you want to go to the second summit, you can take this path and it's just another hour or two of hiking. And at that point we were like, no thanks. And then from that path, there was a third path that would take you to the third summit. So we had one mountain, the chief, but it had three summits that were all separate, but they were all part of the one mountain. Now, listen, analogies are imperfect when we're talking about the Trinity, but that's about the best thing I can think of is this one mountain that exists together, but it's got three different places. And so that's what the the Trinity is, one God, three persons. They're all the same, the same nature, the same being, but they exist in three persons. And so let's look at a few scriptures. There's quite a few. This is just scratching the surface here, but let's look at some scriptures that talk about the triune God. Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So right here, in the creation of everything, we have the God, the holy God, and we have the Spirit of God together. Let's look at John 1, 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, which we understand to be Jesus Christ, the Son, And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. So from these two scriptures, we see that at the creation of everything, the triune God was at work. We had the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit creating together. Matthew 3. This is where they all show up together in one place. This is at the baptism of Jesus. It says, as soon as Jesus was baptized... He went up out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my Son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. The Trinity is there all at the same moment. Jesus is being baptized, the Holy Spirit comes down, descends upon him, and the Father says, this is my Son with whom I'm well pleased. The Trinity, three persons, one God. 1 John 5, we've been in 1 John for the last month. Verse 7 says this, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and those three are one. Are you getting the picture? We serve one holy true God that exists in three persons that have been since the beginning of time and will be forever and are at work in us and through us. John 14 again, verse 10. This is Jesus speaking. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say, I am the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. So Jesus is saying, the Father and I are one. Everything I do comes from the Father. 
We exist together. Then in verse 16, it says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. Listen to this, these lines. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. So in John 14, we see the Trinity at work. Jesus says, the Father and I are one. Everything I do comes from the Father. The Father is working through me. And then Jesus says, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. And even though I'm going to ascend into heaven, you will still see me because the Holy Spirit is the one God. And so we have the Trinity, one God, three persons. From the very beginning, the Trinity has been at work. Our holy God has been at work. And, and so here's, here's just one thing that I thought was really cool that, that I read this week, and, and this was kind of a we talk about review, we talk about, you know, you can read scripture over and over again, you can read books, but sometimes God just points something out to you that you already knew, and it becomes so real, almost as if you're hearing it for the first time. But, but the very nature of God is relational. See, God is love, we talk about God is love. Scripture says God is love. Before creation, God existed in Father, Son, and Spirit. Do you know what that means? That, doesn't, that means that God didn't see our love and try to copy it. God didn't become love. God is love. Before any of this existed, before any of us existed, love existed because God's nature is relational. The Father, Son, and Spirit, unified, working together, true love existed. And so when we say God is love, that's not... God is love like I love Taco Bell, or God is love like we love each other imperfectly. God is love. His very nature is love. And so we understand that we are created in the image of God, to be a people of love, to, to be in relationship. From the very beginning, God's love was present. And to the end of time, the Trinity, the Holy God in three persons will be at work in us. Think about this. In creation, all three were there creating. Jesus was in incarnated and came as a human. Jesus died on a cross, so we have incarnation, we have salvation. Then Jesus ascended to heaven, and, and we have intercession. Jesus is working on our behalf, and one day we will be at the judgment. The Holy God in three persons is constantly at work in our lives. And here's the best part. So God is love. God is holy. God is awesome. If you look at Mount Everest, if you turn and look at the mountains behind me, those are just magnificent, right? I mean, can you imagine climbing that? Can you imagine that? Here's the cool part. The holiness, the love, the light, the life that God is, God calls us into See, we were created in the image of God and we were created to be in relationship with a holy God. We were created to be in relationship with the triune God, with the perfect love of God. Do, does that blow your mind? When we look at the incredible mountaintops, when we look at Mount Everest and we think, oh, that's awesome, God dwarfs that. And we are called... We were created to be one with God, to know him, to live for him, to be loved by him and to love him. What an awesome idea. And so that brings us to our third thing, and that's that we are to be holy as God is holy. This journey to the top, this ascent, this, this holiness we talk about, it's, it's not just a better version of you. It's not just coming together to sing songs. It's not just, it's not just living by a list of rules. It's, it's not just being slightly better than the people down the street. The holiness that we are created for and that we were called to, we are called to be 
in union with the holy God. That's a huge deal. I can't imagine climbing Mount Everest, but I promise you that climbing Mount Everest pales in comparison to the holiness and the greatness of our God. And you and I are invited into that relationship, invited into that holiness. Let's look at 1 Peter 1, verse 14. It says, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy, because I am holy. Listen, I know you came to church today. I don't know what you expected to come and and, and, and get out of it. I don't know what you expected from today, but I want to tell you that you are called, you were created to be holy. And, and what we're doing here is no small thing. We come together to worship the Creator God, and we come together to be transformed into God's holy image. And so when we look at the mountains and we are just in awe, that's, that's what we should think when we see God's power at work, but that's also who we should be transformed into being. And so when people look at the church and when people look at the followers of Christ coming together, you know what they should see? The holiness of God. And so what we do here today is so important. And the only way to holiness and to eternal life is through Jesus Christ. And so today we find ourselves at the base camp. And I know that most of you have probably heard a lot of this many times, but today we look at it again. And, and my prayer for us today is that we will know the holy God, not know him like know everything about God, but that you and I will know God's holiness, that God will reveal himself to us, and that we will be transformed into who we were created to be. The worship team's gonna come up and, and we're gonna sing a song. And, and, and I just would ask you, that today, this week, and everything you do, listen, this isn't, this isn't some like snap your fingers and you've got it all figured out, but, but what we really need is to know the holy God, to know who it is that created us, to know what God's all about, and to be transformed into God's image. Father, we love you today. I thank you for each person that's, that's come to church here, each person that's watching online. And as we come together and we sing your praises, as we worship you, as we look into your word, my prayer, Lord, is that you would transform us into who you created us to be. Help us not to settle for some smaller mountain. Help us not to settle for some smaller version of glory. Help us to stay on the journey to holiness to being holy as you are holy. Reveal yourself to us, Lord. Transform us. Make us into who you want us to be. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Would you stand? And as we sing this last song, we're just going to proclaim who God is and what we believe. So proclaim that with us.